Have you ever watched a motivational video from someone like David Goggins or Andrew Tate talking about how you need to start going to the gym, eating healthy, cutting out all the bad habits, etc.? And so you start Monday, you wake up at 5 a.m. and get ready to go on a run. You come back home. Then you take a cold shower and then you eat a salad. Congratulations. You had one productive day. And maybe you do the same on Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even Thursday. And then by Friday, you take a break as your legs are sore, but you don't do anything the whole day. You stay in bed watching more motivational Andrew Tate shorts. Oh, but I'm learning, you say, and Saturday comes. Maybe I should just take today off. It won't hurt to have a rest day. You look in the mirror and still look the same. Why haven't I lost weight? You ask yourself and you start to stop doing those habits and return to your old self back to consuming content, eating badly, and not doing any sort of workout. This may not be exactly like you, but if you could relate at all, you need to watch the rest of this video. I will teach you methods that will make sure you stay consistent in whatever you are trying to achieve. It could be fitness, wealth, or maybe just your mind. These tips will make sure you do whatever you want consistently and without giving up. The first step is to realize your bad habits. You probably know how bad some of the things that you do are, and you try to quit them, but you don't get anywhere and end up in the same place you were before. If this is like you, listen closely. There is a four-step rule you need to take to stop a bad habit. Cue, craving, response, reward, and consequence. And anytime you do a bad habit, you must use this rule. Let's say you're about to cheat on your diet. Let's use this rule. We start with Q. What is it that makes you want to cheat? on your diet. Maybe you saw a mukbang video of someone eating that food you like but is really bad for you. Craving. Now you want that food you try to take your mind off but it just keeps coming up in your mind. Response. You submit to your cravings and end up eating the food. And reward. The taste of the food in your mouth. That feeling of the texture and flavor getting better every bite. And finally. Consequence. You have finished eating. You look back at your plate and realize what you have just done. Shame, guilt, and annoyance rushes over you as you realize you've cheated on your diet again. Being able to realize your craving is a good habit in the right direction. Just by doing this simple step of just thinking before you go onto social media when you're about to masturbate or eat junk food. This also applies to good habits as well. If you can realize what the cue, craving, response, reward, and consequences are for good habits as well, it will give you more motivation to do it. This isn't a very hard task as you only have to think so. Step 2. Preparing your environment can change the way you take your journey. If you live in a place where it is always messy, loads of junk food lying around and overall looks musty, that will reflect what kind of person you are. We can say this the other way as well. If you live in a clean, peaceful environment with not a lot of distractions, it has been proven over and over again that you can get more work done. This also shows to other people, taking the time out of your day to clean up your living space isn't too difficult. Once a week, set a time for just cleaning up your room, then just try to keep it tidy for the rest of the week. Do this, and you will instantly notice a sudden change in your habits. The key to building lasting habits is focusing on creating a new identity first. Your current behaviors are simply a reflection of your current identity. What you do now is a mirror image of the type of person you believe that you are. To change your behavior for good, you need to start believing new things about yourself. You need to build identity-based habits. Changing your beliefs isn't nearly as hard as you might think. There are two steps. 1. Decide the type of person you want to be. 2. Prove it to yourself with small wins. Your identity emerges out of your habits. Every action is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Why would you want to be a weak individual? It doesn't matter how successful or unsuccessful you are right now. What matters is whether your habits are putting you on the path toward success. Focus on getting 1% better every day. Improving by 1% isn't particularly notable. Sometimes it isn't even noticeable.
but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. The difference a tiny improvement can make over time is astounding. Here's how the math works out. If you can get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. What starts as a small win or a minor setback accumulates into something much more. The people with the best self-control are typically the ones who need to use it the least. It's easier to practice self-restraint when you don't have to use it very often. But the way to improve these qualities is not by wishing you are a more disciplined person, but by creating a more disciplined environment. This counterintuitive idea makes even more sense once you understand what happens when a habit is formed in the brain. A habit that has been encoded in the mind is ready to be used whenever the relevant situation arises. When Patty Allwell, a therapist from Austin, Texas, started smoking, she would often light up while riding horses with a friend. Eventually, she quit smoking and avoided it for years. She had also stopped riding. Decades later, she hopped on a horse again and found herself craving a cigarette for the first time in forever. The cues were still internalized. She just hadn't been exposed to them in a long time. Once a habit has been encoded, the urge to act follows whenever the environmental cues reappear. This is one reason behavior change techniques can backfire. Shaming obese people with weight loss presentations can make them feel stressed. And as a result, many people return to their favorite coping strategy. Overeating, showing pictures of blackened lungs to smokers, leads to higher levels of anxiety, which drives many people to reach for a cigarette. If you're not careful about cues, you can cause the very behavior you want to stop. Bad habits are like a domino effect. They foster the feelings they try to numb. You feel bad, so you eat junk food. Because you eat junk food, you feel bad. Watching television makes you feel sluggish, so you watch more television because you don't have the energy to do anything else. Worrying about your health makes you feel anxious, which causes you to smoke to ease your anxiety, which makes your health even worse and soon you're feeling more anxious. It's a downward spiral, a runaway train of bad habits. You can break a habit, but you're unlikely to forget it. Once the mental grooves of habit have been carved into your brain, they are nearly impossible to remove entirely, even if they go unused for quite a while. And that means that simply resisting temptation is an ineffective strategy. It is hard to maintain a Zen attitude in a life filled with interruptions. It takes too much energy. In the short run, you can choose to overpower temptation. In the long run, we become a product of the environment that we live in. To put it bluntly, I have never seen someone consistently stick to positive habits in a negative environment. A more reliable approach is to cut off bad habits at the source. Think about what is causing that bad habit, then reduce exposure to the cue that causes it. Brother, if you want to stay consistent, you need to put some effort in. No matter how many self-improvement videos you watch, you need to take action. Do not take this video as another hit of dopamine. If you want to upgrade every aspect of your life, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you know when I have posted a video. Peace.